Our first play tonight is Murder by Midnight, directed by Anurag Kulkarni and enacted by Vikash Khurana, Pranjala Chauhan, Shivam Sharma. In a hilarious collision of genres, where who done it meets situational comedy, a hotel detective is torn between duty and pleasure as he has to wrap up a murder investigation before his proverbial time is up. The story I'm going to tell you, you're all going to believe. But every word of it is true. Because it happened to me. But enough about me. We don't have time for all that. And by we, I mean me, Dick Piston, hotel detective. It's Friday night in the big city. And on the Friday night you'll find me doing my rounds of the Lakeview Hotel. An armpit hotel in the outside of downtown. Before midnight, that is. After midnight, you'll find me in the five-star dive bar at the lobby of that hotel, crowning my proverbial sorrows. But at ten minutes to midnight, I'm here in my office watching the clock. No, I'm no proverbial stickler for whatever it is that punctual people stick it for. And not that I could use the overtime, but my employer had made it very clear that anyone who did use the overtime would be spending all his time xeroxing resumes. You see, this hotel had been valuing in red ink for quite some time. And while it was not hemorrhaging proverbial money, it was hemorrhaging potential hotel guests. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. The Lakeview Hotel had the largest mortality rate of any luxury accommodations west of Baghdad, or east of Baghdad, or in Baghdad. As a hotel detective, I had personally, personally investigated six unsolved crimes in the last five weeks and committed four. So you can see, my employers were really not happy with my proverbial job performance. And they said that anyone who clocked even one minute of extra time would be out of a proverbial job, literally. And by anyone, they meant me, Dave Piston, hotel detective. So, here I was, with my proverbial eyes glued to the literal clock. Because when this goes off, my Friday night nightmares become somebody else's Saturday morning blues. So, if my luck holds true, Lady Luck, you could set your watch by her. I am not the man you're looking for. You're not interested. No, I'm not helpful. But you are the hotel detective. For nine more minutes I am. But there's not going to be a tent. So, if your complaint is anything more than a stuck jam pickle jar, there's nothing I'm going to do about it. But you have to help me. I'm the victim of a crime. Well, unless the crime is unnecessary wetness, there's nothing much I can do. It is not unnecessary wetness. Are you sure? Because I've got a blow dryer in the drawer. Mr. Piston, please, you can't just turn your back on me. Not in that outfit, no. Then you help me. For eight more minutes, I will. But that's all the time we've got left. Wouldn't that be enough? Depends on the nature of the time. What is yours? Um, I think they call it murder. And you're the victim. Uh-huh. It happened just now on the Do you know what murder really is? That's the one. Who oh boy! All right, I'll take your case. I'll also set the timer. When this goes off, no matter what, case dismissed. Is that understood? All right. 
all right. Now, if you take a seat, I have to make a phone call. All pretty I would, but I don't have the time for that. Hello, from desk, this is Dick Piston, hotel detective. Put me through to the kitchen. What are you doing? Ordering room service. Does that speed up the investigation? Not at all. Then why are you doing it? Because no man in his right mind would be alone with a woman in a bathrobe with at least a bottle of champagne and a half dozen oysters on the way. <laughs> Hello? Yes. I'll have the honeymoon special. Send it to my office from you. And a box of condoms. <laughs> Well, there's condoms coming. You can never repay me. Well, get on with your murder. Story of your murder. If you make it quick, I'll have some time to Xerox my resumes before morning. Well, I was up in my hotel room taking showers for this. And you haven't eaten? No, not yet. But there's oysters on delicious. So the murder took place in the bathroom? No, it was in the bedroom. After your shower? So, you were shot in the bathroom by someone in the bedroom. What makes you think I was shot? Because if you were stabbed, you would have had to be in the same room as the killer. My God, you think he was in the shower with me? No, I think you were shot. And I wasn't shot. Look! Or stabbed for that matter. You seem to have had a close shave of some kind. That's what I'm saying. All right, since you haven't really been harmed, what makes you think you were murdered? I wasn't murdered. But you said you were. I said I was a victim of a crime. And the crime was murder. Well done, Mr. Piston. With your keen eye for detail, we'll have this case sealed up in no time. Well, if the crime was murder and you're the victim, then what are you doing here? Well, I had to report it, didn't I? He was my husband after all. The killer? Exactly, which means that the waiter must have removed the bedboy, must have removed the food. Ah, 
even before you came into the room. Oh my! Since there are no edibles in evidence, it means that the bed boy removed the tempting oysters before you came into the room and leaving in its absence another tempting sign of the absence of oysters which confirms his guilt. But why would the bellboy want to kill my husband? Because unbeknownst to your late husband, the bellboy was having an extra marital affair with his wife. What? You married? No, 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 you! He was having an affair with you! But how could you possibly know that? Because you have still not asked me that question which any widow in her right mind would ask. Why? Would the bed boy murder your husband? But I did ask. You did? Yes. When? Just now, just a second ago. It was practically the first thing that popped into my mind. Oh, I see. <laughs> All right. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Mr. Piston, you haven't been paying any attention to a word I have said, have you? For God's sake, you were in a bathroom. That's no reason to accuse me of being an adulteress. And what? I'm sorry. I apologize. Accept it. Shame about the bell boy, though. Uh, listen. Uh, 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 you see, uh, uh, my boss will have my proverbial head the moment she discovers that I've killed another innocent bystander. Oh, would it be all right if you agree that this was self-inflicted? Oh, yes, Mr. Piston, of course. I mean, um, the bell boy looks so silent the moment he walked in here. Aha! Oh! A likely story! But it's your story! Yes, but what widow in the right mind would agree to cover up the murder of a man who had killed her dead husband? Unless he had everything to do with it and she was in it on it? But that could mean only two things! No, what? Two! One, one, one! Only one thing! One. I think you're forgetting one possibility, Mr. Beston! And what is that? That the widow is not in fact in the right mind! Again. And I look my shift is almost over. You're free to go. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Piston. I mean, what a relief this is. You may not have solved my husband's murder, but knowing I'm innocent of all charges is a huge load off my mind. I mean, what little there is left of it. How can I possibly thank you? Well, there's champagne and oysters, and I'm off in two minutes. Oh, before that. Oh, I didn't see this coming. Neither did I. But you're a man. That's impossible. Actually, no, Piston. You're a terrible shot. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't be. You were right about this, Piston. Until recently, this lady and I were having a toilet affair behind her husband's back and over his dead body. You? At least I thought we were. I thought we were in love. But now I see she was just using me to get what she wanted. An airtime had a bike and a dead husband? But what makes you think she was using you? What woman in her right mind would leave her husband for another man only to throw herself into the arms of a third man, a third-rate hotel detective, <laughs> over the lifeless corpse of a dead lover, the second man? Unless, unless of course she never truly loved him to begin with and she was just using him to get rid of her wealthy husband who she also didn't love. And she probably did not care much for the detective either. Well, if you waited a couple of minutes, she would have cared a bit. <laughs> Forget it, Pistons. She used us. We are all victims here. Well, actually, not me. No? I suppose not. But if you got a minute, I think I can correct that oversight. Oh, 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 oh look at the time. It yeah. looks like yours is a big Piston Hotel detective. Well, why would you want, why would you want to kick me? Uh, I haven't done anything to you except shooting you a minute ago. I think you're forgetting the possibility that I too might not be in my right mind. The thought you lost my mind. Because you killed two people in your place of work. What was that? Your luck running out? Well, it sounded more like an alarm clock. <laughs> uh, 
case dismissed. It's Saturday morning in the big city, and my proverbial work is finished. <laughs>